Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us at this time of noon. Because um, I know a lot of us who go home during this time, they want to take a short nap. And if we don't go home during this time, we have heavy OPD hours and we are busy. But I'm sure whatever you have left aside and joined us for this session today, you will go back with your eyes wide open. And why I'm saying this is because um, I remember first time I spoke to Dr. Praveen Saxena, it took me three days to reach to him. Because every time I used to call his reception and the reception used to say, Doc is very busy. And somebody had given me his reference that, uh, and I was trying to reach him for an autistic patient of mine. So Dr. Praveen, I don't know whether you also know this or not, complete after 72 hours I was able to say hello to you, <laughs> right? Yes, so he has an amazing practice and I think he has learned from his personal experience. And I personally believe till the time you have cooked the dish yourself, you can never know what is the correct texture and the combination which you have to put to make that dish tasty and I think that's what Dr. Praveen has achieved in his practice. You call him now and he will say, Preeti, ye to sab theek hai. but I think this is the practical thing which you need to check. So before, without wasting, uh, please mute yourself if you are not muted, a humble request to you, thank you. So without wasting any more time. I would want to give the stage to Dr. Praveen. Dr. Praveen, I am personally very, very excited to hear what you have to share today because as always I know I am going to learn which is going to help my patients quite a bit. Welcome aboard and screen stage is all yours. Yeah, thanks Dr. Preeti, always uh, nice to talk to you and it was a great introduction of mine. But I always try to see that no one waits for me. I don't know. I have to just go back and check what is happening. Here. I have to. <laughs> so, kind of outset, I can always uh, work it out. I basically, uh, regarding something regarding me, I'm a very usual go getter and I always try to see that uh, how things can be achieved in a very simple way, uh, which we always uh, uh, try, trying to work into some uh, complex problems. And you can always have that simple solutions with every. Uh, you need to look into that uh, thing. So I, I, I always, uh, I ventured uh, from uh, something, uh, uh, I, I did my graduation from Usmania MBBS in 1990, and later I did my uh, post-graduation in radiology, and I happened to work in some kind of clinical mental toxicology and all that later. It was again, uh, there was a big, as Dr. Priti was telling, uh, I was subjected uh, in the sense I was given a challenge. I think it's a divine challenge what I have got. I was told my son has got autism. That was in way back in 2000. And uh, somehow I was not very keen. Uh, I thought there must be some ear problem or something like that. I was as a radiologist, I just brushed aside and uh, tried to uh, be uh, follow what are the dictates being told and all that. But to my surprise, later when I started working on that, I realized that hey, Bob, this is one thing which was uh, probably something because of the high oxidative stress we are talking about that. And this is something which. Uh, uh, somehow it was, uh, I will try to um, uh, give a picture of uh, this one. So we were actually, as a radiologist, I used to always wear that detective cap and uh, I, I used to get challenge cases and they used to ask me because, uh, you know, the radiologist kind of thing uh, correlate clinically. That was my, I never used to write that clinically correlate because I used to tell this number one and number two possibilities only. And uh, I was told by one of my senior, you know, you cannot uh, add the third probability in the radiology diagnosis because it has to be either uh, when we used to practice CT scans and all that. So we used to think only it is a tubercloma or cystic sarcosis. The third element, uh, fungal probability also to be done. I hate, I used to hate that. So I was trying to work on that and um, maybe over a period of time as my practice grew and I was trying to work on some chronic uh, disorders. And uh, yes, people started, when I worked on that, I started getting into something like hyperbaric oxygen uh, <clears throat> and uh, 
nutritional medicine a lot and uh, i started getting a lot of people who are accompanying a chronic disease patient so i think we the camera dr praveen's camera there was there was a, no worries dr praveen happy to have you so the thing is what i was trying to work it out i was trying to try to work with the people who doesn't want to walk into his father's shoes and he said okay i have seen a gangrene of my father and my grandfather also was a Uh, having a diabetes at the age, and uh, this thirty years old lad, he he feels that I how can I uh, try to avoid that particular? So we started looking into where well, let's say big, and uh, I straight away start my uh, today's talk with a case study, and uh, I yeah we have been talking about this old static model and new dynamic model, and we understood yes we have to be uh, there is a uh, that uh, what happens with uh, people like us is we have a fixed mindset, and we used to all. always think that you okay <clears throat> diagnose the disease first and try to work it out uh, i i think all of you whatever you are practicing and all that this is international society for bioregulatory medicine and uh, this is what we felt the reversal of the chronic disease and the uh, should be the process here and um, we need to really orient towards health model i'm talking about uh, we are working on from pre somatic to somatic uh, the way you get into that so i think this is few uh, small things which we uh, look into that i always work on bioregulation part a lot because uh, we believe that that subtle thing which is called the auto regulation uh, is one thing there are two cousins who has got the same smoking uh, lifestyles and all that they are smokers and uh, still one of them gets cancer does it other one doesn't get so the question here is i start working on i had presented few things what have why this particular person is not getting the disease is my fore and uh, yes i am uh, always uh, i try to look into my uh, failure cases also i try to see where i might have gone wrong in that particular stuff so uh, with this uh, we understood there is a something called uh, all have got uh, you need to avoid all these things and all that but there is something called bioregulation it is uh, it, i can always show this is when you restore your self regulation uh, your main therapeutic axis of this bioregulatory medicine is this one so having worked with some of the uh, big people and uh, trying to understand few things and uh, uh, i felt that there is a need for this you need to look into that uh, dysfunctional inflammatory as well as the, uh, this one degenerative process and we are working slowly on uh, to re reverse that degenerative process uh, so uh, i'll start up with the case simple case which you can always understand this is a a um, uh, case of uh, one of the 25 year old uh, female which, who starts her career in the uh, school uh, of course she is a, uh, a married woman and uh, she starts as a teacher and uh, it was basically uh, we can just understand from few things she was uh, was very cool she was doing fine after three months of this one she noticed her concentration is not just right and uh, she is getting little more edgy and uh, so the thing is uh, in india we have all doctors in the families uh, of every patient everyone starts giving advices and all that and the uh, easiest advice is uh, okay you are pushing your, yourself uh, too much and you try to slow down and all that teachers work i think it is more than not less than 5 to 6 hours per day uh, uh, so that is always a kind of thing and uh, here i would like to show you this patient suffered from uh, started from suffering headaches it was 3 to 4 times a week something like a migraine headaches and uh, and it started getting getting worse when we uh, worked into that and uh, her headache started with the lack of concentration and irritability um, there is this jo hindi mein bolte hain this is chidchidapan she started having some insomnia and uh, she cried for nothing and this was uh, very unusual features and they started uh, the family was worried about that they started taking all the advices what they she she went on to a psych, uh, psychiatrist and uh, even william was prescribed for her for insomnia and all that and all this reassurance ki okay everything will be fine 
and um, uh, see this particular thing uh, is um, uh, what uh, what works with this particular thing she has the features with all of us opd people come to us they have got lack of energy uh, they are depressed and so many people complain with this particular things and uh, this particular thing goes on from one uh, physician to another physician finally antidepressants and all that are um, uh, uh, added so the thing is why what is that uh, uh, any missing point what have we have uh, that we need to have that detective cap actually and i know i know everything of uh, everyone should have to have that particular stuff because uh, you can't just dismiss anything just with the uh, lack of energy and all that uh, with something uh, okay you are having uh, too much stress you try to avoid stress it doesn't work in a clinical practice and um, so there are so many teachers who are being afflicted with this condition and there are there is a lot of work which was done uh, is it we are dealing with a depression or chronic uh, fatigue syndrome or a stress we'll just try to explore this particular stuff and um, uh, coming to the diagnosis yes we were try to we had worked on uh, allergies and lot i had uh, uh, there is a thing called uh, american academy of environmental medicine and uh, i had um, this particular thing uh, this particular multiple chemical sensitivities i think in the modern day it is on the very high rise uh, everyone is being uh, diagnosed with that uh, so many people get into allergic uh, issues with the multiple chemicals we'll see how this teacher got into this particular how what was the thing and how what was the answers we tried working on so um, uh, coming back to yeah you should read the uh, uh, randolph uh, book there is a book of randolph which which is how uh, chronic allergies he has given it explicit explanations even um, uh, a simple thing like headache and all that he he goes into too many details uh, it's worth uh, looking into do doctor uh, work of dr randolph and um, um, there are some great people who worked on that um, i i am in contact with a uh, few um, uh, this uh, there are there are few people who are trying to work it out in a simple way uh, we started working on allergies and all that we used to uh, sensitize the skin and all and we used to check that particular thing but um, over a period of time we felt uh, we need to look into that uh, igg based uh, uh, allergen allergic testing and i'm i'm happy because what ifm is talking about that what dr priti musa as well as dr vivek works out they are just looking into that particular stuff and uh, this ig based testing and all that it doesn't give any kind of uh, real answers for that so see we are trying to work it out on some potential chemical toxins i'll try to relate how this teacher got mm -hmm. into the problems i'm talking about something like formaldehyde i'm talking about something like volatile organic acids uh, formaldehyde is one thing which is always trying to work i'm now i'm so finicky i don't even wear a new shirt uh, right from the which comes directly from this one i try to see that at least two or three times it's washed and i try to work uh, i try to wear that and the same process i try to tell to the people because oh, what happens is that the new finish is very good but that keeps on on outgassing outgassing uh, this formaldehyde like anything so many so many things are there which has got uh, you have got plywood you have got particulate board um, the kind of adhesives which are used you have got something like a uh, a mattress and a new carpet which are which keep on uh, outgassing this on and on and which is a one thing which is causing a big issues and um, oil you are aware about all air condition filters and all that uh, there are something else apart from this like polythene polyethylene plastics uh, which can be uh, i have seen artificial flowers and uh, particularly the fresh flowers also i we take i have observed that the people who uh, sell this flowers they are just not selling like that they they do one thing they just try to put lot of sprays into that and they sell you by the time it reaches you it gets very good uh, uh, order but somewhere we are again we have got that all that chemicals which are being um, uh, pressed into that so uh, all these household chemicals and all that we are talking about solvents we are talking about pen also we are talking about glue ink 
uh, what are the nowadays we get pens we which has got uh, it has got a uh, smell uh, it, it's a perfume is uh, something is added on that and it uh, has a some kind uh, kind of thing various colors uh, this particular stuff and um, talking about something about uh, upholsteries also and uh, whatever uh, these things are are making a big issue in this particular thing and uh, yes, uh, the, I just want to talk about this school paraphernalia, which is uh, which has got something like carbon paper, which has got some ink and uh, duplicating gels and glue, and which is which. What happens is that if you have if you doesn't have a proper uh, uh, the, this one a ventilation, uh, it keeps all gassing. It causes a big issue. So uh, the person who gets into contact with a freshly painted room. Uh, we have experience once uh, you go into a new home and all that, you get some cold, dizziness and nausea and headaches and all that. And usually if it is a, a persistent, uh, you, you have a some kind of exposure, continuous exposure, your uh, uh, total load gets diluted and your body tries to uh, equilibrate and all that and you don't get into that. For all that stuff, we need a good detoxification mechanisms to work on. So what, what are these detoxification mechanisms? Uh, because something is really uh, getting into, uh, it's a bad actually, um, that uh, it is from World War II, we have seen after aftermath of World War II, we are talking about antibiotics and all that. But what has changed, I think, is more the, the way it was being given antibiotics, uh, injectable, and, um, and now the way oral antibiotics have been used, it is uh, totally uh, a big kind of uh, uh, separate talk, which is totally... Uh, your the, this gas is happening in a big way. So the, all the chemicals, what I'm talking about, it's a chemical because we, we are still surrounded by all the things and the new chemicals, the way it is add, added up, uh, which is sl slowly causing that uh, thing called mitochondrial toxicity. And the mitochondrial toxicity and mitochondrial disease is, should be the uh, major kind of uh, work which uh, we feel it is it has to be done. And uh, you have to deal with mitochondrial cytopathy, be it autism or be it cardiac problem or so many things. I uh, So I just go back to why what happened to a teacher. See, when this teacher arrived in the school, it was, it was a new school, freshly painted. She was greeted with this uh, new carpet, new furniture, all piled up in a small room, you know. And uh, she, uh, and apart from that, the ventilation was an issue. All the metros, all the uh, big cities, met, uh, ventilation is a big, big uh, problem. So this chemical load to her system was too high. And uh, some of the chemicals were, uh, the, the, the way you try to take up your chemicals and detoxify, all, um, all that, uh, how, how you detoxify is the real uh, thing where you can achieve a good health. A person with a good health has a good detoxing skills. Well, someone is poor on this, uh, that detoxing skills. Someone is poor, uh, he doesn't sweat or he has uh, issues with uh, poop. Um, his constipator or something like that, uh, they get into real problem. So uh, this, two, this this school teacher, when we got uh, to us, it was uh, it was after thorough evaluation. Uh, they went to three psychiatrists before, and and when she came us to us, and we went to try to look into what best our uh, uh, process in metal toxicology. Uh, we have we uh, we in fact I tried testing few of the things, and the moment we checked her liver function and all that. We we're very sure he has this, this uh, teacher requires uh, some detoxification in a proper way. And uh, so I like the, all of you to uh, look into this. Why I'm so of talking about uh, uh, this detoxification on when you took, uh, when you talk about health, health is like a bathtub and you have got uh, multiple faucets. Uh, you, you, uh, this is uh, black uh, uh, is dirty faucets. And this is the, good faucets. So uh, this, all the water is filling into the bathtub. This is, is a bathtub full of dirty water. And uh, this is a high load. So what are the dirty faucets, dirty water faucets, uh, which are depicted with the blue, uh, black, uh, this one here. Say so there, uh, I think we have been talking again and again about nutrient depleted foods. We're talking about, um, I'm into big way into uh, talking about electromagnetic fields. And uh, that is one thing I believe it's elephant in the room and we don't want to acknowledge that. 
and uh, uh, EMR, uh, uh, we have reasons why uh, we have studies of later, uh, as, as latest as uh, 2020, uh, telling that how with, uh, with 2.4 gigahertz, uh, the kind of thing, this your, your immune system goes for a toss and um, whatever uh, resilient uh, your um, viruses and all that, they are going to uh, uh, do, do, uh, do attack. Uh, radiation pollution we have been talking about as a radiologist i was concerned by radiation but now i see uh, the radiation uh, is of a different thing which is a mobile phone um, uh, radiation is from your microwave uh, radiation is from your uh, something like uh, tvs uh, as well as your uh, cpus and all that so you need to be careful about that um, the other dirty faucet is a toxic relationships uh, this part, uh, this particular thing, this is one thing which is uh, not properly addressed about uh, heavy uh, toxic emotions. And uh, yes, uh, heavy metals is my major kind of uh, concern. I've been talking about this heavy metals for a quite long time. We started talking about high levels of lead, how high levels of lead is causing issues. Um, it, it can be, uh, see, we always look to that lead pipe rigidity and uh, we, we believe that yes, all the uh, things are, uh, unless we, we looked into all the papers and started looking at that. And uh, lead is one thing which is uh, really, caused a base uh, it, it caused a, a big uh, problem with the in uh, particularly indian subcontinent and i'm i'm very sure uh, the way lead is being uh, properly uh, people are still using that lead and people are not aware about that uh, i try to uh, put again a detective cap here trying to understand what is there in the uh, i ask them people to get their uh, what is uh, kept in their homes and all that. I'm surprised, I'm surprised in a very educated people, very alive people also. The, what happens is that we are living all in that uh, two, three BHK bubbles uh, and everyone, most of the people, uh, the recent uh, one of my case who had got uh, lead was as high as 800 and 800 micrograms per uh, deciliter was quite high. And um, when we picked up, and this guy, he is in, in his home, he has kept a uh, UPS, which has got lead acid batteries in that. And you can imagine, he keeps that less lead acid batteries right in his uh, drawing room or in the kitchen. And uh, what happens is that this batteries, and when you keep it, it keeps outgassing. And uh, there are a number of things I can talk about lead. Uh, I, I'm talking about uh, the other dirty faucet are the polluted waters. You have got antibiotics, you have got uh, pesticides, you have got biotoxins. Uh, biotoxins, I will just try to give a big, a small thing about biotoxins. Wherever we have started working on uh, all chronic diseases, all autoimmune diseases, the moment I ask, the, uh, I think every doctor has to look into that now, is open the mouth and check it out. What are the any fillings are available or not in that any uh, what is his dental health this the uh, does this person has gone through a uh, something like root canal and uh, it has to be worked on that uh, so uh, that biotoxins are basically when you do a root canal or you do uh, you have a penis and all that uh, you you keep on uh, there are a lot of markup uh, biotoxins they keep this is the factory from where everything happens so you, you have to be careful with all this stuff so uh, kind of uh, so you have got dirty water facets on one side another side you have got a clean water facets clean water facets are yes uh, you need um, uh, fresh air, you need pure water, you need attitude, you need to put uh, your peace, joy, and love, you have good relationship, you need to, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a, life is a music, you know, it's a, uh, uh, it's like a river, it has to be, uh, you have to work, work. see, uh, this is uh, something which you, we all have to look into that, because as a doctor, I never used to see what is the person, how is he happy in his family and all that, unless I came to functional medicine, I uh, was, I thought this is also one of the things. And uh, uh, we try, we are working with some of the uh, oncology patients and they just, uh, we, we try to work with a detox approach, detoxification, oxygen. So the moment we do that, I have seen people who doesn't have purpose uh, to live. And um, they, this is a big catch. The people who normally they resign by themselves and it's difficult for them to recover. So we need to look into all these first aspects and the drains. That's the most important thing of the bathtub is the drains. 
So what with these drains, we can release that all this particular stuff uh, out. And these drains are what you are, what are the drains in your body you have got? You have got the bowel, you, know, you have got the liver, kidneys, and lymphatics. Simple, uh, very, very uh, things actually. And uh, lymphatics, for some reason, was not emphasized to us because we have, we, as a, we used to see as radiologists, we used to do uh, angiography, we used to do venography, lymphaticography was, we never did it. So the thing is, we are living in a uh, scenario where is, there is a lot of lymphatic stasis. Uh, which causes a problem. And uh, yes, bowel, liver, kidneys, and you just how to open this detox drains. What are the things you need to do? I think this should be good. Uh, this one, you are, you are always talking about it, uh, taking plenty of water. Uh, that itself can help a lot. Uh, you need to detox bowel, liver, kidneys, and lymph. You can always use some uh, simple, simple remedies, which is not very costly also, can work it out. Uh, the thing which I had happened to work with autism which has helped my patients and myself a lot was uh, something like far infrared sauna and uh, this is uh, we had added one more component into it with a near infrared um, uh, Joseph Marcula told me you had to add this near infrared also into this particular stuff and we added that and um, I can always tell you whatever practice I have got the patients they would like to go for a first thing they do is they go for a detox is uh, far infrared sauna um, yes, clay baths and uh, uh, is advisable, but somewhere uh, people find it very nasty. They don't look into that. Uh, the other thing is uh, fasting. Uh, you have uh, we do a lot of enzymatic uh, things. Enzymes are a, uh, a big thing in our practice. I can always tell you, uh, even if there is a uh, inflammation uh, has uh, progressed to uh, to the uh, great extent uh, with these enzymes, we can really uh, block that uh, cascade. Uh, and it will not spiral into something uh, big. And um, you are, we, we all are talking about colonics, enemas, and all that. And um, uh, one thing I had done before was something like gallbladder flush and all that. But it is slightly tricky. Everyone uh, doesn't have that uh, capacity to fast for three days. So we, uh, but that's a, if we can tell them orally, they can always do that. We, we uh, ask people to do something called uh, a good detox, which is uh, mouth pulling. They can have any vegetable oil and try to swish and split. Uh, it has to be done for at least, uh, uh, you have to keep that. Uh, 40 ml or 30 ml of uh, oil uh, into the mouth and try to keep doing uh, uh, swishing and uh, then you can spit it out. It, it, it's really good. Um, and the exercise, what I found, which is a detox exercise, what I believe is something like rebounding. Rebounding, I can tell you, this is an amazing kind of stuff. I would like to do my cancer patients also. I'd like to subject them for rebounding. Uh, the simple fact is it is a it's a two minute or three minutes window you can do that twice a day and your lymphatics are absolutely uh, they, they are some sluggish lymphatics they get away and uh, you get uh, if you do it for five minutes you it's like equivalent to one hour walking and all that uh, i know the one hour walking is a uh, it's not an easy thing these days um, so this lymphatic, uh, this rebound, trying to use a lofa whenever you uh, take a bath, uh, use a lofa and try to see that you with this with the brush, if you can just uh, wash it. And um, with this, it, 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 it's working in a very, very easy way. Uh, we do something like photomagnetic uh, lymphatic drainage and uh, laser energy detox. Uh, uh, this is one thing uh, Cowden has uh, taught me. Uh, Lee Cowden is a cardiologist and uh, he is basically uh, a, and, uh, a cardiologist talking only about integrative medicine is really uh, great actually. You should look into what is uh, Dr. Lee Cowden uh, doing out there. So uh, this teacher had a normal phase one uh, detox uh, function, but her phase two uh, was uh, there was some uh, high levels of uh, some uh, this particular stuff. And we started doing this detoxification, trying to tell them, okay, you need to follow each and every step because what happens is that you miss out on one thing if someone is having a uh, constipation for three days and you start your detox you, you are bound to go for a uh, rebound actually it will be it will backfire you like very horribly so you need to prepare uh, very well for the detox and uh, uh, definitely uh, when we do the detox the first phase uh, when we do that uh, people get into uh, 
minor headaches and all that and they they feel that feverishness and all that uh, so you need to be always uh, sometimes even a simple thing like far infrared sauna uh, that causes a big problem because there is a shift of toxins um, there is a shift of toxins it uh, shift from uh, into the normal uh, uh, it gets into the system and the fact toxins which are stored in for years they start uh, and the moment this redistribution happens uh, it uh, you you have to face the music so you need to be very very uh, this one back to this uh, teacher um, although the school received a facelift with the new furniture and the ventilation was the major issue i had to i, I went uh, to this personally and tried to under make the uh, correspondent of the school understand that um, but uh, thing is yes there is a uh, so this this way we started uh, Treating this doc, uh, this uh, teacher, and uh, she understands now. And she understands now everything about that. And uh, it is uh, we had to work it out on a lot of niacin, vitamin B six. Uh, we gave her L glutamine a lot. And uh, yes, uh, so the thing is, you had to most of the people, at least thirty to forty percent people, have the glitch in the liver itself. And uh, if you are able to get over that particular thing, things are uh, much better. And uh, and yeah, they are very very. Uh, this uh, this teacher family was very educated. They went on to take the HEPA filtration. Uh, the HEPA filter is an easy thing now. But I'm talking about uh, five four five years back. That was a big thing for HEPA fil uh, filter in the ACs and all that. So uh, this this is one of the cases. And this teacher started. Uh, she was back. On uh, this one, she never used any uh, antidepressants and all that. Um, what I want to stress is, yes, we have we are dealing here with a big things here, something like heavy metals. Uh, I'm talking about mercury, lead, arsenic, cadmium, uh, aluminium. I'll just give you a small idea from where uh, this is. Uh, I, there are there are some reasons to believe, and uh, we have all the. Uh, um, uh, data where uh, it, it, this heavy metals are responsible for not only ischemic heart disease, they are responsible for Parkinsonism, Parkinsonism, something like magnesium toxicity is one of the uh, reasons for uh, uh, this particular stuff. And uh, all, all chronic fatigue is I, it's always chemically, uh, they have more, more chemicals and all. Um, apart from that, we, have, we started working on eczema, psoriasis, we worked on multiple sclerosis, uh, SLEs to name, and uh, we found there was a connect actually. The uh, what connect? I'll just show you. Uh, this is what uh, we as a metal toxicol. Uh, it was difficult for me to understand what is this metal toxicology. But uh, now uh, I think uh, can, because this is the um, big, um, uh, you had to face this challenge. And uh, there are there are some things which I would like to show you. Uh, you need to go back to this period table, uh, which has got uh, uh, minerals. You have what you need to just understand. There's a short atomic number or atomic weight versus heavy. Uh, see what happens here is I'll just give you an example of calcium, beryllium, uh, strontium, barium, and uh, so when you have beryl, when you have something like magnesium, when you have calcium. This is a divalent metal, bivalent metal, and uh, over the downside, which has got lanthanide series and rare earth series, you have something like cadmium, uh, thallium. You have got something like so. Whatever, uh, see, every metal has got a valency. Uh, in calcium and all that, it is bivalent; it's plus two. Whereas in aluminium, whereas in um, um, it is plus three, and uh, you have a valency of one is uh, plus one is sodium and potassium on the other extreme side is uh, your uh, fluorine chlorine which is called fluorocarbons uh, fluoro uh, this one which has got seven uh, the kind of thing so what happens is that uh, you have to have a just basic knowledge of this uh, periodic table and you can understand what happens is that um, if this calcium and magnesium are in a one uh, kind of uh, 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 there is an enzymatic reaction uh, see we are talking about mitochondrial uh, cytopathies here in the mitochondria there is a thing called it's an energy production mitochondria is energy production. it's a powerhouse and uh, from right from cytochrome 1 to cytochrome 10 uh, there is oxidase uh, there are some reactions which keep on happening and most of the musa was telling the other day more than 300 enzymatic reactions are facilitated by this catalyst one of them is mag magnesium 
so the magnesium wherever it is there and whenever this heavy metal in the sense in the some form of cadmium or uh, uh, something like mercury or lead comes and he says okay i'm the uh, don here and you have to vacate your seat and i'm going to occupy that particular star and the moment people um, that uh, there is a change uh, that magnesium gets a uh, thing and the uh, lead and all other stuff comes this all enzymatic reactions come for a switching halt and your atp production goes down so the the more you are toxic the lesser atp is you produce and your lesser energy uh, uh, this is uh, this is what i uh, i had my inference and only thing is i just i'm just trying to put things on a perspective and uh, this is how uh, we uh, we have to uh, there are good uh, there are always good minerals which is called something like zinc uh you have got uh, 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 selenium and uh, nowadays uh, all with instead of zinc and selenium we find some heavy metals in that we have seen in prostate uh, something like tin and cadmium instead of this uh, selenium and zinc so uh, we, now we we believe that the problems are probably because of uh, this is one thing so i just wanted to uh, put across this use of medical uh, there that's essential but the way it has been put across the all the kind of imitation jewelry we have done some cases in uh, some part of uh, uh, maharashtra uh, around, around that place called karad and uh, this was done with karad institute of medical sciences and uh, people who are working in this imitation jewelry and the whole family is involved and i can see horrible levels of lead in all of them and uh, you know uh, the moment we started doing the detox and all that they it, it, we had a very uh, marvelous kind of responses and all that and uh, so uh, what uh, my take is yes you need all these essential metals and uh, somehow we are uh, slightly uh, confused in one other thing uh, we keep talking about uh, giving um, uh, water which is uh, uh, we should have less metals and all that uh, on the other hand uh, with this ro waters and all ro processes and all that Uh, we are totally depleting all magnesium or uh, magnesium magnesium was not much actually but uh, all this minerals and all that that is also causing a, a big big issue uh, i had uh, one of the incidents i remember something like 4 5 years back one of my very uh, good of patient who stays 50 kilometers away from hyderabad 50 to 80 kilometers and he said you should come and see our village and uh, i want you to have a look because everyone has got uh, pains all over and right from the old man to the young kid uh, the pain spare totally proximal myopathy it was into the proximal muscles only they were not able to squatting was difficult for them then we understood yes there might be some problem with vitamin d and all that then i asked him what did you change uh, so he said uh, with our um, so uh, there is a kind of corporator they got a filtration system new which is they installed one year back so all of them they were using something like a depleted water and this depleted water was a cause of this particular stuff so uh, i think yeah, we had to always look into what is happening with them and what are the changes they have done over it kind of things and uh, that may uh, is a probably answer because all this heavy metals and all were there there is a lot of things which were discussed uh, this uh, this was given as a treat, uh, kind of uh, uh, syphilis uh, there are so many cases where heavy metals were advised uh, in the uh, this one and um, yes uh, we need to look into all this uh, prob- probably simple simple things because all this essential metals are non biodegradable uh, they are uh, their half life is too high they can stay in your system uh, probably once you even when we check this heavy metals the catch here is uh, if i uh, check your heavy metals for a peak person who is having a chronic disease must be for 4 years or 5 years and if i check now the blood i don't get anything in that particular stuff i need to look into something like a hair or i need to do some detox uh, uh, the the thing is uh, sometimes we have to optimize we have to do some challenge test even after fourth or fifth challenge also sometimes they don't it doesn't come out because uh, heavy metals uh, the way when you have you have imbibed suppose on monday you have imbibed uh, some toxicity and uh, on tuesday or wednesday or thursday you can always find in the blood 
But if you start looking after a week or 10 days, you may not find anything in the blood. And uh, where this is where uh, I think most of the uh, clinicians are having a problem trying to fix that particular thing. They say, okay, there's no heavy metals in the blood. That's uh, what happens is that once in the system, heavy metals, lead or some chemical enters, it will be there into the blood and uh, a kind of uh, extracellular matrix uh, for some time, but it gets you very fast. Liver is the first, first, first uh, pass and it, it, may, it takes up a lot of this thing. And with this kind of things, liver uh, tries to work it out, phase one, phase three, and it all this... Um, we, uh, I think I should talk about one thing called fatty liver here, because as a radiologist, I've seen a lot of fatty livers. I always, uh, whenever somebody is having fatty liver, I used to think, oh, this is something like a diabetic, you have a diabetes. Uh, then I realize, you know, something bigger is there whenever you have this fatty liver. So uh, it is, uh, and we started doing optimal challenge test and we used to, we used to pick up that heavy metal load in that. So you need to be careful about this, whatever heavy metals. And heavy metals, can uh, you can always get exposure from air, food, and water. And uh, it's uh, all the biological cycles and what are the movements of the metals and all that. Because what I can always tell you, uh, whatever it goes up, uh, even you burn all plastics or you burn all this stuff, it goes up and it comes back with the acidic rain and all. It has to, it is a, uh, we are living in a uh, slightly catch nine situation. Uh, so, uh, a word about something called molecular mimicry. Uh, this is what uh, kind of uh, thing is has to be understood. Molecular mimicry, I was talking about the same thing. Magnesium, instead of magnesium, cadmium and mercury enters and uh, it, it creates a havoc. And uh, this is uh, one thing which we always uh, are trying to understand. I can always talk about something uh, cadmium, copper and nickel are uh, mimics for zinc and uh, thallium mimics for potassium, and you have got something manganese, it mimics for iron. And uh, all this arsenate, arsenic as uh, arsenic, um, all the vanadium and all that, uh, this it mimics phosphate and allows, uh, so all the kind of phosphate fertilizers, what we have uh, seen all these days, Phosphate fertilizer, the problem with the phosphate fertilizer is that all, all these things are toxic and uh, uh, you have got arsenic and all that. We have rice fields, we have paddy fields in a big way and now we understand all rice has got high levels of arsenic, all rice has got high levels of uh, um, cadmium and uh, it's a uh, not just uh, uh, the rice what we make biryani out of that but the rice itself when it's cultivated it has got high levels of arsenic and lead. So uh, with this, I just wanted to uh, put a food for thought and uh, it is, uh, this is metals are really one of the factors and uh, it is not just uh, the old people with that amalgam caps and all that, even the small kids, they can, uh, there is a, uh, there is an issue with them and uh, these people are always uh, trying to on a, uh, this one. They can always uh, imbibe whatever placental uh, circulation there from it can start from uh, mother to the womb uh, also it, it's possible and uh, we had a few cases we tried to work on a few autism cases and when we picked up that this is something uh, mother has hypothyroid has got some fillings and she has some uh, uh, fish eating uh, kind of stuff and uh, yes, this is definitely the first child uh, gets into a issue. Uh, most of the hypothyroid patients, they tend to store their, uh, uh, they are very stingy, you know, they are like Indians. Uh, they, they, they don't, uh, whatever uh, stored thing, they don't easily give it up. So hypothyroids are a big issue. And uh, most of the people with uh, toxicity, they end up having uh, hypothyroidism. And uh, I think Dr. Vivek has told about that plenty. And, um, and another thing is, uh, uh, yeah, I can always share. Uh, Dr. Preeti, we have some time. Dr. Preeti. Okay, I can, I can just go ahead with the one more we case. We have five more minutes and then we can take questions for 10 minutes. Okay, this was a case of ADHD and the child was, uh, this was an interesting case. I just thought I'll just put across and uh, his uh, mood, everything changed over a period of time. Uh, I have a similar case right now also. And the father says he, he was good, quite bright. Immediately his uh, uh, grades declined. We see very common this particular thing. And we focused on some areas 
and uh, this particular patient to all the labs were normal uh, he was put on uh, antidepressants and so many things uh, ritalin you know the uh, way it is adhd child is uh, kind of thing so the essence was that these people changed the this particular case they changed the residence from one area to another one and in hyderabad you have got a new housing uh, communities coming up in a big way and uh, this particular uh, area uh, we asked the parent to get the water also tested and uh, we found uh, high levels of mercury arsenic lead and uh, cadmium and uh, this was uh, subsequently and uh, we we changed all these uh, things actually and uh, so uh, this uh, uh, this was uh, it, it, it was not very tough thing actually so i just thought he probably changing the house and all that people used to think that this is one thing which is uh, uh, a issue but uh, yes it makes a big difference when you have to have a history properly and someone is uh, what is his what are the things he kept in the home uh, is it a uh, uh, he is keeping a ups with a um, uh, this uh, all batteries and all that the keep on not gassing does he have a fresh uh, paint and uh, people are still uh, i think now things are getting smarter and we have now no volatile organic acids in the paints we have okay we get it for a um, kind of price but uh, we need to look into that we are uh, we are we are always talking about how to uh, uh, we, even if you get a mosquito bite it's not going to be that problematic if you get a bite of that uh, hit what you use uh, and um, mosquito mosquito doesn't die your mitochondria are going to suffer so you you need to always have that mitochondrial cytopathy in mind and uh, i felt as a general practice uh, i felt ki something is missing when we only uh, try to find a, we used to tell okay the patient is having depression that's all uh, we are not uh, we we still we never knew what things to look for i always uh, try to uh, now that we try to look into what what's happening there is there any fresh uh, um, uh, kind of uh, what are the things they are they have changed uh, i i think dr priti i think this is enough i can always take some questions thank, and yes. thank you dr praveen for such an insightful session i am sure everybody who is here would have got something to think about something to dig deeper into and know how we can benefit you know wellness especially in doctors in a much more holistic way please if you have any questions feel free to unmute yourself and ask your questions to dr praveen yeah yeah sir if if there is so much problem with rice and other food products what should one eat then it's a big dilemma uh doctor we are talking about something about uh, i in fact i try to go one mile extra i tell them the way you are started uh, cooking the rice with the way your grandmom started cooking the rice i think we had to go back to that area uh, because i still remember we used to throw up that ganji which is called peach in hindi uh, uh, when you cook the rice and you have got a water which has got uh, uh, contains full of starch so you had to look into that process again uh, making the rice cook in a pressure cooker all this this uh, all this residues that will be left over into that and it will be a high glycemic food uh, high glycemic food dr priti is a master on that but apart from that glycemic in the uh, kind of stuff you have all this residues which come into that so uh, i as a uh, person in uh, south india i cannot resist i if i day don't take rice for one day i don't think i feel full satisfied so now we we believe that you have to soak the water overnight try to see that you don't go for that uh, rice which is uh, easily grown um, in the sense if you can work it on something like basmati you i think there is a thing called pili bhit ka rice and all that basmati rice is slightly better uh it doesn't have so much uh, the way it is cultivated is different so uh, so you need to be smart these days to try to work it out uh, yeah i always i believe rice is the biggest uh, problem so um and what's your take on vegetables sir? they tell that there is everything under the skin exactly and exactly. Then, exactly and then with the, with everything the minerals and vitamins just under the skin we have everything on the skin also they doctor like also 
yeah just talk to praveen also to add to this your opinion on using organic rice um actually uh, we have, have gone to the one more extent dr priti uh, we had uh, one of our uh, in person in uh, there is a rice which is specially low glycemic index rice and uh, someone is making in uh, there there are some good startups started looking into that uh, yeah. low glycemic index index rice as well as what you told was i think that's organic uh, is ultimate thing uh, organics are basically without pesticides Uh, but without this metals is slightly a big uh, issue but uh, people have worked on that uh, the people with iasc uh, some uh, these people have done and it is being available also it is available over the counter now okay it's uh, slightly it's slightly pr- pricey but i would like to uh, go for that uh, regarding the other question which is um, uh, of vegetables and all that to my patients i try to give them a option Uh, is how to at least uh, this option is very easier take a lukewarm water lukewarm and uh, put a uh, kind of uh, lukewarm water and put uh, maybe half a spoon or one spoon of uh, 3% hydrogen peroxide into that and uh, see that your vegetables soak into that water for not less than 20 minutes see what we are doing with this uh, hydrogen peroxide or you can use ozonated uh, thing also uh, okay. we are at least cutting down this pesticides and all that by more than 80% doctor uh, i think i think everyone can uh, afford that three and, yeah and this vegetable cleaning ozone machine is very very economical it cost about 3500 or 5000 within that range exactly i think we have to we have to look into that and uh, we need to look into that dirty dozen uh, fruits and vegetables yes. yeah we it's a slightly a tough thing here because i believe uh, we were at the one point we keep telling okay you take cruciferous vegetables i see all cruciferous vegetables including that gobi and all that it has got lot of uh, pesticides and it's not easy to work it out also so the best way is trying to use this uh, ozone or uh, use some hydrogen peroxide uh, that way we can at least reduce that kind of thing at the same time we need to optimize our detoxing skills try to see that your liver is the most uh, overworked organ try to see that liver should not be bombarded with all these chemicals it's it's day in and out it's happening and so just to add to this you know dr praveen when he ended his last thing was about my dr praveen is also sitting straight now i don't know what i ended with <laughs> right the so dr praveen said something about mitochondrial activity yeah. right and that is so critical to what dr praveen has just said our body's ability to detox so if our mitochondria are becoming suppressed body is not able to detox if body has toxins mitochondria is getting suppressed so i sometimes feel it's a chicken and egg situation dr praveen there is one more thing uh, dr priti we need to add here mitochondria works with this particular thing there is another element which is very critical in mitochondrial activity is the uh, hypoxia component and if you are able to remove that hypoxia you try to induce fresh oxygen or something like hyperbaric or whatever stuff or giving giving some good pro oxidative therapies hydro vitamin c uh, hydrogen peroxide so many things that right. will add like anything it will be a good uh, game changer uh, yeah it is a slightly tough thing but uh, the moment we try to do a detox and at the second session we try to put a heavy high dose uh, vitamin c the that immediately because what happens is that you keep on detoxing for 12 weeks also the patient doesn't get any response the moment we add this uh, pro oxidative therapy and he says okay he will get more patients right so i think it's all about balancing and uh, the first thing is it's about thinking like this so i think uh, dr praveen in exact time given he has covered the topic so beautifully thank you dr praveen the case study of this teacher was uh, very interesting to me because uh, you know i also get a lot of clients like this and um, sometimes you think that toxins have to be looked at the end right but now i know that's where you start and then you proceed anybody if you have any questions please let me know yeah what is the ratio of water and hydrogen which should be there uh dr praveen 
Yeah, yeah. I'm just uh, taking that question actually. What is uh, what is the ratio of water and hydrogen peroxide? Uh, that's right. quite simple actually. You take uh, some for 200 ml to 400 ml of water, and it all depends on how much you want to do that. Uh, for a day's meal, uh, or for a sub, whatever alu, whatever you use it, uh, you can use about uh, 400 ml, and you can add one start, one or two spoon of hydrogen peroxide. That's enough. I think the and the I catch is here 20 minutes into that lukewarm water because 20 till 20 after 20 minutes uh, and you exactly. you have to use it immediately um, because after 20 minutes of adding hydrogen peroxide everything of that nascent oxygen will be gone and you will not have any effect in it. Right, and uh, Dr. Praveen, there is another question. Dr. Minakshi wants to ask: How do we cleanse our liver at home? Uh, Dr. Minakshi, it is first thing is uh, you need to avoid all the stuff which can. Uh, I, I'll give an example here. I always talk about uh, this. This is my favorite thing. And uh, we used to talk about the liver uh, thing is you have to stop alcohol and all. Okay. Uh, there's okay. more nasty things than alcohol which we are being subjected today, uh, which are called. Uh, uh, what is that chalra thing is fog and all that whatever we are using all this uh, scents and uh, air fresheners they they are all having some ether into uh, that particular thing and the, it ultimately uh, your body your liver tries to convert that into aldehydes and all that which is really a problem so first thing is avoid all that stuff if you can avoid it it's the best thing you can do uh, having had that particular stuff we try to work it out by simply improving your uh, detoxing skills. Uh, liver needs some sil good silymarin. Silymarin is a very good herb. We try to work out with the uh, alpha lipoic acid. We try to, there's a big kind of things list which is uh, we try to offer. Uh, L -glu um, glutathione in the form we try to work it out. Um, thing is, we have gone into extent of checking into why the livers of some people are weak. Uh, we feel, uh, we are able to now with the work with we did with along with the Great Plains Laboratory, we for, found glutathione sulfuric transferase is an issue. And this GST, and it's not this GST what uh, Nirmala Sitaraman is talking, this glutathione uh, sulfuric transferase enzyme is one thing which is uh, most of the Indians have got a problem. At least 20 to 30 percent of us are having low into that particular thing. And if you are able to uh, make your good glutathione, you will not get into any problems, whatever uh, toxins may come. In. So the idea is uh, another uh, key thing, if you can, um, you ask me about a uh, home, what are the things you uh, do a detox, good detox at home. You can use a warm water enema or if you can use something like coffee enema, it is the best thing available to detox a liver. Uh, detox a liver is uh, slightly a, a tough thing, but if you can use coffee enema, which is organic, it, it, is, it is a great, great kind of Works thing. beautifully. Great. Thank you, Dr. Praveen, for all this guidance. Thank you very much. And most importantly, we started sharp at four, three, and we are ending sharp at four. Couldn't be more precise on the timing. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And all the best. Thank you.